So my name's Lloyd, I'm a trainer at Winners 2000. For this video, what we're looking at is I've had a little problem with my knee to do with the tracking, also a little bit of tendonitis. So I'm talking about my journey on how to rehab. For the first five to 10 minutes of your workout, you want to be getting warmed up, getting a lot of blood going through the muscles so you're ready to stretch. We're then going on to foam rolling. So imagine the fascia of the muscle, it's a giant cobweb. Imagine you've got a knot in that cobweb. We just want to roll it out so you get stress all over the muscle uh, rather than that in particular spot. So what we're going to do is find that niggle or that nodule within the muscle and just keep rolling it out until you feel comfortable. From here, we're going into a little hamstring trick I learned. Uh, so I'm not going to bore you with the science but within like a couple of minutes, you should improve your hamstring flexibility for up to between one and three inches. Uh, so all you're gonna do is get your tongue to go to the top right hand side of your mouth, pushing your jaw across to the bottom left. Hold for around five to 10 seconds and repeat the opposite way. Uh, do it around three to five times each side and then you should improve your flexibility like this. We're then going to warm up your posterior chain, so hamstrings, glutes, and a little bit of lower back. Uh, bridges are awesome variation for these. Uh, so what you're gonna try and do is push your heel into the ground. Make sure you're not pushing no weight at all through your toes, so you activate the hamstring, and make sure your heel is directly below the knee when you bridge up. We're then going on to a single leg version, so flexing your opposite toes towards you, keeping that opposite leg nice and straight as you bridge up throughout the movement. Pressing your hands into the floor for a little bit more support. We're then stretching your glutes and your sciatic nerve. Bring your opposite leg across to your opposite knee and then just pull your leg towards you gently. So this is really important for those that are sat down a lot, that do a lot of driving or work at a desk. Last thing you want is to aggravate your sciatic nerve and dramatically reduce your flexibility. So it's important that we keep on top of these. So here we're trying to stretch out your back. Uh, so all you're gonna do is roll your shoulders forward. So running your hands down the back section of your legs, flexing your toes towards you at all times. Here we're going into hip 90-90s. So you're trying to keep 90 degree angle in your leg throughout the movement, pushing your heels down into the floor and you should feel this in your hip flexors. You then progress up into a plank and then into down dog. So trying to push your heels into the floor, uh, pushing your head, chest, shoulders through so you get that max stretch. We're then going into stretch your glutes. For those that play sport, this is almost like a must. Uh, we use these muscles to develop most of our power and I do a lot of sprints with my football. So it's important to keep mobility in your glutes just so your power output from when you're sprinting and playing your sports will be at peak performance. So from here, we're stretching out the hip flexor. So again, those that work at a desk or play any sports will feel quite tight in this area. You're getting into a lunge position, tensing your abs and then pushing your hips forward. It's really important that we're not overextending through the back. So another stretch just to stretch out your hamstrings. This time, just one on one knee. Lean yourself forward, still flexing your toe towards you. So with my knee issues recently, this has been the most unbearable stretch for me to do. Uh, so stretching your quads, which again is just pulling on the patella a little bit. This will be one regression of the quad stretch I just showed you. So putting less pressure through the knee. This time we're using a Swiss ball. Similar to before, we're tensing the abs, pushing the hips forward, trying to keep a nice upright position. So this is my squat currently. As you can see, it's not great. There's a weakness within my glutes and the tracking of my knee, again, is very, very off. I'm putting more and more weight to my right side because my left knee in particular is so painful. So what we're just doing is doing a little test, see how I feel today, and then we're gonna track this over the course of however long your rehab might last, and hopefully we'll see improvement. So here we're adopting a wide stance of the previous test. Again, trying to keep the knees always over your toes. You can see how uncomfortable it is throughout the movement for me. I can find I can get to around 45 degrees before it hurts, but anything lower than that um, is something that will progress over the next few weeks. 
So with this exercise, we're pushing the heel hard into the floor as hard as we can, trying to almost hyperextend the knee, which physically wouldn't be possible throughout this movement. These here are assisted Cossack squats. So I'm doing this test uh, because it's a unilateral exercise. I can see how I, comfortable I feel within one side compared to the other. As you can see, one side I'm developing relative good mobility and flexibility, whereas the other side I'm really lacking strength uh, within that knee joint. And it's another test that I'll revisit each week. So here we'll focus on the eccentric part of the movement on a step up. Again, we're just trying to work on that stability of the knee. So you'll always be uh, a little bit stronger on the eccentric part of the movement, hence why we're focusing on that stage before the actual stepping up part. So we're trying to focus on a slow eccentric, nice controlled all the way throughout the movement. Here we're looking at TRX squats. So as we come up to the top, we're driving the hips through to activate the glutes. We're coming down as low as we feel comfortable to either the point we feel pain or the point where we start to shift our body weight onto the stronger side, either left or right. We then progress onto pistol squats. So again, working unilaterally. Again, trying to lower yourself down as low as you feel comfortable. Lower the better, and we're gonna progress the range of motion throughout the workout. So with the leg press, we're trying to press our back hard into the bottom of the seat. So sometimes I have to pull myself in due to lack of mobility in the hip. Uh, what we're trying to do is get as low as we feel comfortable, pushing the weight through the heel and trying to activate that VMO section, basically your quads, um, especially when we get to the peak contraction at the top. We're then moving on to box squats. So hopefully over time we'll be able to increase our depth, but at the moment I get to this point and I feel like I need to fall. So hopefully throughout the sessions I do, I'll get more and more comfortable getting the boxes lower and lower until I progress to my normal squat. So to allow me to get back to my football, it's important that I provide an unstable surface. So this is gonna force my knee, ankle, quads, hamstrings, calves and hips, as well as my core to work a little bit harder. So hopefully when I go back to my football and I do come across that unstable surface or someone pushing me off balance, I should be able to feel comfortable throughout. With this, similar to before, we're pushing the hips forward, tensing the abs, trying to keep the knee directly above the ankle for now. So the reason we're not pushing the knee over the foot um, is to provide less pressure through the knee. Normally this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but due to feeling pain when I do this, I wanna try and go for a bigger stride and load the hamstrings until my quads feel a little bit stronger. Then moving on to some ankle mobility. So with this one, putting the band around the lower section of your ankle, then trying to drive the knee either forward, or you can also do this left and right. And hopefully over time, this will provide more flexibility through your path. So this has been my leg rehab routine. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to see more content, follow me on Instagram at bodybyhitch.